Welcome to a Shin Show, the government shutdown is over edition, at least for now. Joining me is Elsie Shin, Nick Shin, and Sarah Shin from, respectively, the greater Washington, D.C. area and Omaha, Nebraska. Good morning or afternoon, whatever. Hello. Good mid-afternoon, still early morning. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So how was y'all's week? No, it was good. It was fantastic. It was pretty good. Superior? Yeah, nothing happened, you know, uh, which is good. <laughs> nothing no happened news to you. Is good news. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And how about you, Sarah? Anything happened to you? I don't think so. Good. It was Sandy's birthday on Friday. So, oh, yeah. Sandy being uh, a relative. Yes. Your wife's daughter. Your your your, your wife's yeah, sister. Daughter. Sister-in-law. Your sister-in-law. Yeah, my sister-in-law. Yeah. Yeah. I, we usually we just, I just call her my sister. Yeah, it was her birthday nice. on Friday, Aww. so we. I feel like we didn't do much. Probably not. She did you lots can't of rem- things. She so, did like what? Happy birthday! Name one thing. She went to Aladdin the musical. That's a thing. I guess I really wasn't tuned into that. Yeah, well, I'll be apparently done. in Omaha they had Aladdin the musical. Mm-hmm. The touring we, production, we, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have playhouses. And things here in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> We're very cultured. Yes, yeah, Omaha, Nebraska, known for its culture. Right. It's actually a much bigger city than it used to be. All right, well, good for Sandy. And she turned, what, like 24? Sure. Oh, whatever. All right. 24 good. or 5, I don't know. How old are you, Nick? 22. Then 4, yes. Uh-huh. See, I can do simple math. Congratulations to me. All right. Well, happy birthday to Sandy. Uh, glad you had a relatively restful week. Uh, Elsie, your week seemed, seemed busy to me. Uh, it was insanely busy. It included getting the car serviced, getting Brad's braces off, having nonstop meetings every minute I was at work, but did also include my birthday and uh, over-the-top unicorn spectacular in my cubicle when I got to work that day. Yeah. Ooh, well, happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. All right. A lot of birthdays this week. A lot of birthdays. All kinds. All right. So that's enough of that. Uh, so here's what else happened. The government reopened this week. Good for the government. Hooray. Well, for the next three weeks anyway. Well, yeah, that's true. And President Trump apparently spoiling for another fight in the meantime. But the bottom line here is that it was an unmitigated political disaster for the president in the sense that after nothing was accomplished after. Yeah. <clears throat> after three weeks, he was back to the original position that was offered to him on December 22nd. So he gained absolutely nothing but a reduction in his own uh, favorability ratings over the course of three weeks. Didn't win a single thing. There were no. Well, that's the art of the deal, baby. We got to <laughs> lure him in for the next time. Art of the deal. <laughs> Well, but I'm sure glad we screwed over 800,000 people in the process. Well, uh, yeah. So they will get paid this week, although it'll still not be till the end of the week till they get paid. So that's tough if you are one of the federal workers who was affected by that shutdown, which affected primarily the Commerce and Department of Homeland Security and uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture. So there were some portions of the government that weren't fully funded, and that added up to about 800,000 workers. But, hey, did that, do you get uh, back pay? Yeah, they're going to get back pay. They passed okay. <laughs> one of the few pieces of legislation that they passed during the shutdown was legislation that will give these people back pay. So, OK, I wasn't sure if they got back pay, in which case I th- it would be a lot of people would be pretty fucked if they didn't. Extremely. Know? They'd be. Yeah, they'd be in big trouble. But as it is, you know, if you all of a sudden are if you're living paycheck to paycheck and you miss a couple of paychecks, even if the paycheck comes back later. You're, you know, you've got fees, you've got bounce check fees, you've got all, you've got late fees, you've got impacts to your credit report from late payments. I mean, these are things that... Or if your rent is due right when it starts and you were counting on that paycheck. That's right. And you're hoping then that your landlord is an understanding type. Yeah. I mean, so... And some people took out of their retirement plans or their college saving plans and they'll never recoup from that. Yeah. So tough, tough break for those folks. And oh, by the way... Right now, the current deal funds the government through February 15th. After that, who knows what will happen? uh, President Trump is setting himself up for exactly the same showdown that he did last time. Although no one at this point wants it to happen again. He says it will, unless he gets what he wants. that means that people will be more willing to negotiate. Perhaps. We shall see what we shall see, said Big Big Max. So the the only thing... 
I, I do think that one thing that came out of this shutdown was um, an understanding more, uh, more of an understanding of what those 800,000 people did, you know, because people think people don't think about how much the government um, really, you know, is part of our day to day or whatever, what services they do, what what parts of our society's services are governmental services, I feel like. So, yeah, they figured out what would you say you do around here? Ah, Not much. Just air traffic control. Right. <laughs> Airport security. Right. You know, I just do things like file your taxes, give you your tax return. Small things. Right. Things Small you can things. things you can live without. Especially during tax season. We don't need that. Especially during flight season. Oh, that's every yeah. day. Okay, got it. Right. Oh dear. Oh, uh, we've got ourselves in a pickle now. Right. So anyway, the government's reopened. That's good news, but the situation is far from resolved and there will definitely be more to follow. So good news for those people who were screwed. Bad news is that they got screwed and that it looks like they could be screwed again unless something changes. So let's hope that something does change. Here's open. Here's open. Thank you, Nick, for that. And then moving on to the next significant piece of news, perhaps uh, I found it significant anyway. Roger Stone, longtime political operative, linked all the way back to when he was 19 years old to Nixon. In fact, a guy who has a tattoo of Nixon on his back and is proud of it was arrested uh, on, uh, well, I guess uh, on the 25th, arrested earlier this week. Anyway, you in, cannot make this shit up. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. He really has a tattoo of Nixon on his back. Yeah, he does. Like a whole full back piece. Yeah. That's man. Like face. Yeah. And Wait, like how big are we talking here? It's, it's pretty big. shoulder blades. I thought I, it's pretty big. I mean, it's a little less than life size, I think, but still pretty goddamn big. What yeah. the fuck is the purpose of getting Richard Nixon's face tattooed on your back? He's a go-getter. He's a man of the people. He got things done. Well, no, actually, so I'm sure there are those who believe that. But Part the, of the Richard Nixon cult. Yes. You're going to be son, embarrassed because like, I was going to suggest that as a family tattoo for all of us. <laughs> well, Richard Nixon for everybody? Matching, yes. Ma matching Richard Nixon tattoos? I was going to I was gonna even maximize that and go with Trump. Okay. Yeah, there you go. But I'm going to get that on my face. Like over <laughs> my leg. So it almost looks like it is my face. <laughs> oh, wow, what a quality idea that is. That's what? better than a, you know, they got those realistic lifelike masks, you know? Yeah, they, they do. You look, yeah, but you, we take to the next level and get some tattoos. You could do that. You could. Anyway, so Roger Stone got arrested, and he does indeed have a tattoo of Nixon on his back. No question about that. And, yeah. So he's he was arrested for lying to this the special prosecutor about his contacts between Guccifer, who we now know was Russian intelligence and the Trump campaign. And so he lied about those contacts. And that's what he was been has been arrested and indicted for. All indications are that this indictment and arrest is primarily to seize his electronic communications and his computers, phones and hard drives so that they can really uncover the extent of the links between the Trump campaign and the other Russian operatives and intelligence officers that have already been indicted by special counsel Mueller. So there will be more to follow on that as well. Of course, as you can imagine, Roger Stone has proclaimed his innocence and that, quote, he will never, ever testify against the president. So, yeah, we'll see about well, that. So his, his charges were were about lying to Congress. It's They're not even about any sort of actual collusion, right? Well, they're about lying to the special prosecutor and and Congress both. I guess I can't remember what all the charges are, but they're they're really about lying. That's what they're about. Right. In part to federal investigators, that's a crime. If the feds come and ask you questions, you are required to answer them truthfully. And I do believe he did testify to Congress, did he not? So yeah, so probably lying to Congress also a big time crime. When you yeah. when you testify under oath to Congress, lying is perjury. Perjury is a felony. <laughs> Serious penalties accrue. So anyway, he doesn't seem to be that worried. It is interesting, though, but that both uh, Stone and Manafort were once partners in a lobbying firm. And now both of them are facing significant jail time. We'll yeah, see. well, that's what happens, you know. That's what happens when you go off, get... Uh... Richard Nixon tattoo. I bet uh, Manafort has a Richard Nixon tattoo somewhere, too. It's we, like some, you know, brotherhood they're in. Could be. But he's just a little more private about it. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Not quite as. Yeah. All right. 
Anyway, so are you that's... suggesting that one's on his ass then, if it's more private? I mean, that's the implication. <laughs> I'm glad you picked up on that, Elsie. I did not pick up on that, but now that I have picked up on it, I can't really unsee that in my mind's eye. You're not supposed to. <laughs> I'm supposed to burn. <laughs> oh, success. every time you close your eyes, great success. It's there. Anyway, so those are two big pieces of news that caught my attention. Any news this week that that uh, grabbed you? Maybe frozen alligators was that a thing? Uh, I will tell you what grabbed my attention this morning is the polar front coming towards the plains. And we're going to have, well, Omaha probably not so much. Nebraska's kind of on the edge of it. But um, Chicago and all that's going to have like negative 40 degree weather with negative 70 degree wind chill. Wow. Like, that, yeah, it's cold. It's going to be cold next week. Yeah, that Under sucks. Luck, y'all. Yeah. Yeah, it's supposed to hit here Thursday. High is going to be Thursday, I think, like. 15 something like that around here and that's pretty cold for this part of the world yeah i think we're going to be negative five or so not negative 40 certainly but pretty pretty freaking cold but any sub-zero temperature is cold anything yeah. below zero you're gonna <laughs> want to not go outside or you'll freeze your face off pretty much yeah i mean yeah, that seriously. shit will kill you it will i mean it, you'll freeze to death <laughs> i've got yeah. some news the, yeah the weather all right go ahead I actually told this to you, Sarah, already last night, but when I worked in Council Bluffs, that barbecue place, there was a no-frills supermarket behind behind our building, like catty corner behind us, and home, it, it was uh, it was uh, abandoned, like it had been shut down and everything cleared out, except for the, like the shelving and the coolers as it, as it happened, and homeless people would always hang out there, like you would always just see them loitering around the front or like beating the shit out of each other around back. And let me, like, the homeless people in Council Bluffs are a whole different, I know I've said this before, but just for clarification, the homeless people in Council Bluffs are, like, real fucking homeless people. There's the homeless people in Omaha that you just see, oh, great, that you just see standing around with, uh, like, signs begging for money and shit. But the homeless people in Council Bluffs will, like, walk up to your car while you're in the drive through and shit, bang on your window begging you for money, like that kind of shit. Aggressive tell- panhandling. Yeah, and they'll like come into the bathrooms of public places and just shoot up in the bathroom for, you know, hours on end, uh, which is what this one homeless guy used to do in our place all the time. Doesn't matter. The moral of the story is there's this one homeless chick. Her name was Scary Mary. Everybody in Council Bluffs knew who Scary Mary was. Because she was scary. She was scary for one thing. She has had a very distinct. She wasn't like scary, but she was aggressive with her money uh, pandering. You know what I mean? Yeah, panhandling. But she would really really walk up to you and like bang on your fucking car window. Like people would do it. She would do it in the driveway at our job all the time. Like at the drive through, people would be waiting to get some fucking barbecue. She would just walk up while they're in line. And, and we always had to chase her off. She'd dig through our trash and get the fucking like the fat and the meat we didn't use out of the trash and eat it. There was rumors that she would do real lewd things for a six pack of beer, but no one ever wanted to find out. Right. So all of a sudden, we just stopped seeing Scary Mary all around anymore, which is weird because she's always, you know, walking around town collecting cans and aggressively asking for change and whatnot. But we didn't really think much of it. Uh, I mean, what do you think of it? Right. And then my buddy Tyree sends me a, uh, a, a article a couple of days ago that in that no frill supermarket that Mary frequented, along with all the other homeless populace. They the, some third party company was coming to remove the shelving and the old coolers from the shell of a building, which it's been abandoned for like two and a half years now. Mm-hmm. And they found a body in there, like a, a body in the shelving of the uh, no frills. And they said it had been there for quite some time. And uh, I think it was Scary Mary. Pretty sure it was her. What makes you think it was her? Because we just stopped. Like, dude, you saw her walking around somewhere. Every day. That's all she did. She's homeless. Like, so you would see her once a day if you were in Council Bluffs. She would interact with somebody and you would see it or she'd interact with you. You just saw her. She was fucking, that's what she did. And a few others, too. There's old pentagram head. I hope it was pentagram head. There's this guy with a fucking pentagram tattooed on his forehead. Yeah. He'd always be like muttering under his breath and like doing some kind of weird dance. Yeah. But what he would do is he'd come into our bathroom and then he would just be in the bathroom for like, an hour to hour and a half and then just walk out of the bathroom sweating bullets and then just leave. So what he was, he was shooting up in our bathroom 
Got we him. had to like make him leave once and he pissed all over Tyree's shoes. And <laughs> it was a whole fucking ordeal. He's a huge piece of shit. He was weird. Like made you feel very uncomfortable because he didn't ever talk in full coherent sentences. Probably he mentally ill. Doing- real, de- real deep into that mess. Yeah, I'm, or whatever it was he was shooting up. But, yeah, uh, yeah. I will hope it was him, but I think it was uh, Scary Mary. So have I'm you- really enjoying these homeless names, by the way. Who <laughs> comes up with these homeless names? Well, and what's to, the best homeless name that there is out of all of them? To be fair, Pentagram Head's kind of a cop-out. I mean, you know, he just has a pentagram on his head. That one's not very creative. <laughs> Scary Mary, she was, she's had that <laughs> moniker for years, decades. Uh, <laughs> that's just the way she is. I don't know, like, you know, I don't know how... And there's other, there's old One-Eyed Joe. There's, uh, you know, Hook Hand Magoo. <laughs> Are you kidding me about Hook Hand Magoo? <laughs> no, no. Those last two were totally fucking made up. All, all I have is Scary Mary and... Pentagram Head, I see. Scary, Scary Mary is really the only one with, like, a town. She's, like, the only one who's famous. Like, everyone in town calls her that. Nebraska or called her that. Had Walkin' Willie. Walkin' Willie, yeah, that he he uh he lived in Nebraska City. Was he homeless though? He wasn't homeless. I don't think he was homeless. I think he lived in Hamburg, but he, he, he would walk every day City. from Hamburg to Nebraska City. Yeah. Which, which, which is, is a really seven mile impressive. walk on a highway. Seven miles on a highway. Yeah. Uh yeah, so uh, I don't know how to wrap this up, but have you called the police? And it was an article, bro. Yeah, I know, but I mean the police found the body, like but, yeah, but it, they didn't identify the body. I'm not gonna well, we, fucking call them and be like, So who was that? I don't even know if Mary's her real name, dog. They might just be like, yeah, it was Gladys Edenberg. And I'll be like, who the fuck is that? And they won't know. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Maybe over time, more details will be released. But uh, but we I know it wasn't Pentagram Head because because this is a female that was found. Uh, no, no, it just said a body. Oh, a body. Yeah, the okay. article did not, did not specify. Gender. Yeah. I see. So we don't even know. We just don't know. But this is a deepening Scooby Doo mystery right here. Yeah, some weird shit happens in Council Tucky. Um that's no, so, this is an interesting point that most people outside of the Midwest would not know, which is that Omaha, Nebraska has a twin city across the Missouri River. It's Council Bluffs, Iowa. And Council Evil Deformed <laughs> Twin. <more like. laughs> Evil Deformed Twin. That is the reputation of Council Bluffs that somehow it's some redneck central compared to the urban and sophisticated Omaha. And, that's uh, it is. and well, the only real difference from Council Bluffs and Omaha, besides that it's a smaller town, is that Council Bluffs does sport legal gambling which is kind of interesting uh that's not the only real difference no 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 there's a lot of uh like first off like as i originally pointed the homeless people are a different brand of homeless people like they're real fucking homeless people <laughs> like you see people in omaha on the side of the road and they look kind of dirty i guess but they're wearing fucking some oakley's or whatever and right. they're just holding up a sign saying please give me money and you're like i'm pretty sure that that person is not homeless like, but you see the homeless people in fucking council. But oh yeah, there's another. Here's another nickname for another homeless person. There's this kid we just called Angry Birds because he would <laughs> he just wore Angry Bird pajamas and that's it. Like had the same fucking bottoms, which were Angry Bird pajamas, all the time. And that dude was fucking crazy too. They all had some. I'm pretty sure they all had either some. They were born with some mental affliction or they yeah. afflicted themselves with a mental infliction due to all the drug use but angry birds would eat the shit out of our trash too and like when he came in and talked like he would it would it would not be sentences like he would just say things that were not coherent and we had yeah, yeah and we fucking you, you got to get him out of there you know what i mean like and it's you know it's hard to do sometimes they don't want to leave right they're not, they're not listening yeah you know what i mean i do with what you're saying and but you know you, you know why we have a homeless problem in this country in part because we don't have good mental health help. Yes, that's true. We well, yeah. I mean, we got rid of insane asylums, right? Essentially, well, the insane asylums we had were uh, not that good, right? Like and one yet, flew over a cuckoo's nest type shit. And yet, were they not better than putting these people out on the streets without any visible means of support? I mean, that's a matter for debate, isn't it? Alternative is the, is the problem. If you're going to be anally raped, wouldn't you want it to be by your trusted medical provider rather than yeah. a stranger? Yeah. No. No. In fact, it's worse. Ask any of the gymnastics victims from Larry Nasser, and they'll well, tell you that. There you go. Then, therefore, by that logic, the insane asylums are not uh, such a good idea. You know what I mean? If you work as a nurse in an asylum, insane asylum, you're lobotomizing people. Okay, that's why you do it. 
What do you mean? We don't. We uh, don't. No one believes in lobotomies. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. You don't just lobotomize. You can't even lobotomize people anymore legally. I say we haven't done that since like the early 1900s. Dude, have we talked about Jackie Kennedy's? Yeah. Lobotomy? Yeah. Yeah. We but have. let's also just say that people do their own lobotomies now by being on social media too much. That's true. Good yeah. one. Mm. <laughs> right. <Come> on. <laughs> that is a serious problem, though. Homeless is a serious issue, and you know, God rest her soul. Scary Mary, rest in peace. If indeed yeah. it was her. I think it was her, man, because you just saw it didn't matter what the fuck was happening. You yeah, saw but her. When's the day. last time you saw Angry Birds? It's been a long time, but I haven't been in Council Bluffs. Well, there you go. So I we really don't know. In Council Bluffs, poor souls who live over there and they haven't seen her. My old boss from that job, Nate, he says he thinks it's scary, Mary. Okay. He lives over there. He hasn't seen her in a long time. Well, that's the consensus. On the other hand, it could just be another dead body in the old grocery store Could and be. we don't know those homeless people dude they would always be fighting back there they'd always just be loitering around the abandoned no frills so like it did as soon as they said that they found a corpse in the abandoned no frills i was like first off i know for sure that's definitely a homeless person because they're always around there doing you know some sort of shady ball licking activity <laughs> so, so somebody <laughs> some homeless person got stuffed up in those coolers yeah, it's uh, it's, sad. it's just a matter of which one. Yeah. Well, uh, rest in peace, Scary Mary, or potentially Angry Birds, or potentially One-Eyed Joe, or potentially uh, Pentagram Head, or no, potentially fuck, Book I, If Hand it's McGee. Pentagram Head, he totally deserves it, dude. He's a little <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> I don't know why you on Tyree's that. shoes. Weren't you listening? Oh, yeah, mm. I got it. The Tyree shoe pissing incident. No, I, I'd forgotten that already. All right. Um, great. So, so much for news. I think. Is there any other news of interest, of note? Mm, I got some, uh, no, not like current news. No. No, there's past news. There, I guess they call that history, don't they? Actually, I got something. I got something kind of, it's pretty recent. Yeah. This, it's a 2000, it was a 2017 documentary. It's called Harvested Alive. What in the it's, world is that about? Well, let me, first off, let's start, let's start with a little, uh, statistic. OK, so the average weight, if you need a liver transplant in the United States, the average weight for a, a new liver is 24 to 36 months. Yeah. Okay. The average weight in China <clears throat> is 14 to 21 days. OK, well, they got a lot more people there. Well, that's because since 2003, China has been harvesting organs from live prisoners to create its thriving transplant industry. Uh, which that's, that's, I guess, Yo, the what the fuck Chinese legally way to do it. Like, I don't know if it's like a Geneva convention legal way, but like it's legal there. So they do it. But I've also read that China has a real bad problem with like people just abducting each other and, and taking some organs and selling them on the black market. Yeah. Well, heard... if you have a thriving organ market, then it's a good way to make some money. Yeah, I'm I just suppose. saying, if you steal a TV, they get to steal a kidney. That's fair. That, okay. does, that doesn't make any Eye sense. For a Bluetooth speaker. Kidney for a TV. TV. Hmm. So, up, so there's a black market in organs in China is what I'm hearing. So is that yeah. what the documentary and, is about? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, the documentary, I believe, I mean, it's just a, I haven't watched it. Uh, but it's <laughs> it's just some shit on the front page of Reddit, which I would like to watch it. All but right, it's, this is talking about them harvesting organs from live prisoners. Oh god! So that seems like a legal thing. Like you know what I mean? So there's staff taking organs from prisoners, and then because it says if you needed a new liver in China, you only got to wait two weeks, two to three weeks, hmm. as opposed to twenty four to thirty six months, two to three, two to two and a half years. So. Uh, yeah, dangling a Durgan. There you go. But there's also an, a thriving black market, uh, uh, organ harvesting gig too. I see. They're so just, they just be harvesting <laughs> organs like a motherfucker over there. It's the moral of the story. Well, if you need a transplant, go to China. Well, you know, You're you think about this. Get I get, I get that. But even if they did it in some other process besides, you know, saying to prisoner X, Y, and 14 B, hey, guess what? You're going to be giving me one of your kidneys and a portion of your liver. Even if they did it separately, there's still a billion more people in China. So you would think that there would just be more opportunity to get organs and livers and kidneys and whatnots. Don't yeah. they need more organs and livers and kidneys and whatnot? 
Isn't That's, it? Is what's the proportion? Right. It'd be interesting to see what role religion plays because, um, you know, some people feel more like they need their organs in the afterlife, and I don't think the Chinese really roll so much like that. I'm, I'm not saying it's a thing. I'm just saying maybe it's not not a thing. Yeah, they might. Uh, I I get the feeling that they don't give a stone cold fuck about the religion when it comes to the organ harvesting. Yeah, because they're godless yeah. communists. Well, I mean, if you want to. Sure. Whatever. I mean, <laughs> they are. Your words. I mean, they are. That's that's, <laughs> that's a pure that's fact. A fact. Oh, I remember. I think they're, they're not godless, are they? All of them? <laughs> Everyone in China? No, they're not. But I'm saying that the Communist Party, the official position of the Communist Party, is that religion a, is a oh, I'm nest- for the masses. Right? Exactly, and that are? yeah, and there is no god. Atheism is the official position of the Communist Party. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that was like a you know. I didn't know communists had like an official religion. They have an official non-religion. Or, yeah, or lack thereof. Yeah, that's it. It's totally official. Uh, In any event, there was one other kind of like huge piece of news that I spaced on, which is that Venezuela is in absolute chaos. And there are now (laughs) dueling presidents, President Maduro and President, uh, the other guy whose name I can't pronounce. Like Gatos or something. I can't remember. Or And the the fun fact about that is Russia supports one and we support the other. So how is that oh, going to play out war. with Trump and Putin situation? It's going to be real interesting. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, we don't know. War. Oh, well, yeah, maybe. Yeah, could be. And it's right on our doorstep. So uh, that, I think, will play out in some unpredictable ways in the weeks ahead. Well, I'll tell you one thing. One guy's going to win and the other guy's going to die. Not in that order. That sounds like a UFC bout to me. No. Mm, yeah. Pretty much. And I think it could be in that order. Yeah, it could. No, be. Or, yeah, whatever order. <laughs> Something... Not necessarily in that order. Yeah, that's going to be a big deal. Not necessarily there, not that order either. The possibilities are endless. <laughs> right. Not really. Uh, actually, <laughs> so something. So Yeah. So in terms of uh, like where we think that's going, I think it's going to end badly. I think it's going to end in violence. That would be my guess. And then I do have one other piece of news, which is that uh, the Taliban in the U.S. appear to be engaged in the most productive peace talks that have been conducted since we went there and supposedly utterly defeated the Taliban. Well, so, uh, great. Yeah. So um, look, look for I'm a sure complete. Yeah. yeah compl- look for a complete withdrawal of U.S. troops uh, in the near future as we declare victory and go home. Excellent. How's the Republican base feel about that? I don't know how the Republican base feels about that, actually. I I do think that there is, in general, a sense that, well, you know, we either stay there forever or we leave at some point. So what's it going to be? And it's going to be a big dog, you know, a pay, man. It's there's no shame in the in the game. We we ultimately 2019. It's time we lasted. You know, we lasted a good eight, nine years longer than the Russians. And we had to go a lot farther to get there. So good on us. That's what I say. What is our obsession with Russia? What do you mean? Why? I mean, what's our obsession with Russia? Why? Are, why are they always? They're just the competition, man. They're a big ass country. They're yeah. So they're the, a size thing. Yeah, it's a size thing. Well, that makes I, sense. It actually, it's also a nuclear arsenal size thing too. They're the biggest country on earth in terms of square mileage and square footage. So they've got the biggest apartment. But then beyond that, they've also got the baddest weapon, you know, in terms of, you know, they've got like the biggest handgun and the best apartment. So they're naturally, you know, the competition. Yes. Well, I think the main competitions, of course, are United States, China and Russia. And I feel like the United States just feels like we have more in common with the Russian people uh, because we share a lot of European lineage, whereas under... As a whole, I would say American society doesn't overly relate to Asian societies. We have a very small Asian population. And so I feel like we relate enough to Russia that we feel like we understand them. So it makes us feel like we can compete more or collaborate more for whatever reason. Whereas I think China is just silently sitting back waiting for us to all kill each other. Hmm. That's interesting. I don't know if I agree with that or disagree with that. It's just an opinion. Hmm. Is it substantiated by any facts? Who can say? Tune in next week to find out. <laughs> There's a lot of conjecture, doesn't that count? Yeah, it does. Now, ho- ho- let, let me look something up here. I'm I'm reading more about this uh, Chinese organ harvesting dealio. <laughs> you got a one-track and, mind, son. 
mainly what it is is that it's political prisoners that are getting they're being executed on demand oh i see f- to provide uh Okay, so it's basically if you're a practitioner of Falun Gong, uh huh. So it says political prisoners, mainly Falun Gong practitioners, yeah. are being executed on demand in order to provide organs to recipients. Yeah. So I'm looking up what Falun Gong is. It's a religion. It's a Muslim thing. No, yeah, it's Dharma. Not. It's the Dharma wheel practice. Yeah, it's it's a re- it's a religious uh, a religious Sect? order. Chinese yes. religious religious spiritual practice that combines meditation and qigong exercises with moral philosophy centered on the tenets of truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance. So that sounds pretty shitty. That. Like what terrible people these must be. I know, right? Yeah. So stay off that fucking Falun Gong, unless you want your organs took. <laughs> that is the truth. If you are indeed in China. You're going to want to avoid that. You're also going to want to avoid, as you point out, Sarah, being an, a Uyghur. That's spelled U-I-G-H-U-R, I believe. Uyghurs, oh, yeah. Are, yeah, that's the indigenous Chinese Muslim population that is currently estimates are that about a million of them are in concentration camps. Yep. So China's not all about that religion. They're not about the free expression of it. They're not about belief in it. And uh, if you want to be religious in China, just keep that shit to yourself. Someone likens this to an early stage of Larry Neven's known space fictional universe, which uh, deals with widespread organ transplant technology that significantly improves health and lifespan, which leads to a gradual expansion of death penalty to petty crimes in order to satisfy demand. Hmm. Well, that could be possible. So I would recommend everyone say on the straight and narrow, look, if you've done nothing wrong, you've got nothing to worry about. Right. Right. <laughs> That's the most creepy phrase I've ever heard in the English language, yeah. frankly. If you've done nothing wrong, you've got nothing to hide. <laughs> exactly. And the obvious. Let us in. Yeah, the obvious. Well, I mean, that's a, it's a huge, you know, it's the illusion of privacy, right? Everybody wants the illusion of privacy. The illusion of security. Yeah, I want that, that I guess. Well, that too. Yeah. Hey, so uh, did you, uh, now that we've kind of exhausted current events and organs, uh, I meant to ask, did you guys watch any um, any movies or see anything interesting or all that, any of that stuff? Watch, I watched the Ballad of Buster Scruggs again. Uh, oh, I saw, the bro- I saw the Dragon Ball Z movie. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Definitely the best one that they've ever... All the other Dragon Ball Z movies that have ever existed were just shitty, straight-to-DVD type things. But this one, which they actually had in movie theaters, uh, was good. It's hardcore, man. It was like at least an hour... Well, I don't know. At least a solid 45 minutes of it was just fighting, which you don't see in a lot of Dragon Ball Z movies. Right, and who really cares about the plot of a Dragon Ball Z movie? I don't know. You You just want to see people beat each other's asses. Right. Cartoon style. I mean, this, they kind of changed the story of the character, Brawley and, and Bardock, and Goku's dad, all that shit. They completely changed the fucking original story. It, to, so this is not canon Dragon Ball Z? This is all well, the old universe one, Dragon Ball Z. No, 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 no. Just all the old shit before Super is not canon anymore. Everything. All oh, the so movies, they, pulled, they pulled a George Lucas. Yeah, it's not canon anymore. All that shit was bullshit, and they're redoing it now. Oh. So if you know what Dragon Ball Z is, this makes perfect sense. I mean, I used to watch that with you when you were just like little. Yeah, we'll see. What happened is, is they went, it goes Dragon Ball, and then Dragon Ball Z, and then Dragon Ball GT is what originally happened. Right. I don't think I watched GT. I think I just watched Z. GT was a fucking critical disaster. Okay, <laughs> nobody liked that shit. Like, like critics really gave it a lot of shit. Right. The only cool thing about it was Super Saiyan Four. They had that in there, which was badass. Jesus Christ! How Super many Saiyan levels are looks, there? There's four. How long was it, how long was their hair? It didn't get any longer. It turned. It went back to normal. It, it's instead they turned into a great ape, but maintained their human form. They had all the power of a great ape it's in the so human form. Ridiculous. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they're like werewolves, but instead of turning into a werewolf, they turn into a giant fucking monkey. A giant <laughs> monkey. It. I'm into it. Like shoot lasers out of its mouth and shit, like King (laughs) Kong and Godzilla combined. This makes a lot of sense coming from the Japanese culture. Yeah, and so then Super Saiyan Four is them keeping it. Doesn't matter. I'm I'm getting real nerdy with it, but the point is, is that GT is officially never fucking happened. So it now went from Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. And now Dragon Ball Super, which takes place immediately after Dragon Ball Z. And they're doing all these different movies and shit because GT, as well as all the movies that were made in the universe of Dragon Ball Z, 
are now not canon. All right. I watched uh, Glass. Oh, really? Is- what did you think yeah. of that? Well, here's the thing is that I watched the McAvoy one uh, split, but I never did watch the one with Bruce Willis because I didn't realize that they were linked. Yeah. So you never Uh, saw Unbreakable. Yeah, I never saw Unbreakable. So I feel like I would have enjoyed it more if I had seen Unbreakable, Um, but it was pretty good. It was a little long. Uh, The best part of that film was still McAvoy and his 26 different personalities. That is he. What an actor. Right. Uh, uh, but it was, you know, it was fine. It was fine. I'm in that same boat. I loved Split, and I really want to see this next one just to see him in that role again. But right. I have to watch the Bruce Willis flick first and haven't. Definitely would recommend watching the Bruce Willis flick just because, you know, there, they, they, there are definitely nods to it that I was just like, okay, all right. This is clearly some Bruce Willis magic. Got it. Okay. So yeah, and that original right. film, by the way, was called Unbreakable. Yes, and it's one. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't. That's the same thing with me. I saw Split, never saw Unbreakable. Didn't realize they were linked. Nerd. Yeah. Nerd. Well, except well, at the end when they show that shot of Bruce Willis having a right. cup of coffee, right? And right. You're like, oh, yeah, this- but then I was like, then you realize that something. But I didn't even. I was like, was there a Bruce Willis movie recent? I didn't even think that. I was like, so is this going to be the sequel? Bruce Willis going to be in the sequel? I didn't even realize that there was a corresponding Bruce Willis movie at all. Yeah. Well, now you know. And indeed, there is. Unbreakable before you see glass. Glass. Glaze. Yeah. So it's Unbreakable, Split, and then Glass. Yes. Those are the three to see in that order. I wasn't a huge fan of. So the girl from Split comes back and plays a role in the Glass movie. Mm hmm. And I wasn't a huge fan of her role in the movie. They, you know, victimized her again. <laughs> like, but, you know, whatever. Other than that, it was fine. All right. So you you see it in the theater or wait till it comes out on DVD? Uh, DVD's fine. <laughs> no rush. Got it. No rush. Now, I, will- I appreciate the nod, however, that most often once a person's been a victim of abuse and trauma like that, they tend to become so again. So there you go. That's a real life uh, combination. There you go. There you have it. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure I approve. In any event, uh, the one thing that I didn't see this week that I probably will never see, but I have a morbid curiosity to see. It's on Netflix. It's like the Ted Bundy tapes. Oh, yeah. I saw that scrolling through Netflix. I also started the first episode of season two of Punisher, uh, which was started strong, then got real slow and had some super unrealistic fight scenes. Thanks, UFC, for ruining that for me. So. <laughs> Yeah, I but yeah, I saw the I saw the Ted Bundy tapes, and I too was, had a morbid curiosity, but probably will never watch them because who has time for that? Right, exactly. I mean, on the one hand, I'm always curious about what makes a, an absolute monster tick, and you would think if you listen to tapes of interviews with a monster, you might get some insight. But all you're probably going to get is confirmation, like, "Wow, this guy's a fucking monster." Right. Yeah. What a psycho. Right. So I'm going to go I ahead mean, and give do, it a miss. You do kind of want to. I know what you mean. You want to see like what that person talks like in day to day conversation, like or what they fucking. Yeah. How they act like so that it may be. Hopefully the idea is you could if you saw someone else acting like that, you'd be you know to watch the fuck out for him. But then at the same time, they make these movies and all this shit. It kind of glorifies serial killers. It's like not, you know. It's not good for it's not a good deterrent for other would be aspirational serial killers. It's true. The only serial killing I like to do is in the box variety. I the love box cereal. Variety. <laughs> right. Cereal. Hey, delicious. So here's some news. Yes. Uh, last Sunday. Uh, for because I'm an adult, me and Murphy smashed an entire box of Fruity Pebbles oh, in one sitting. Mm, so that was good. And then felt like absolute garbage for the rest of the day. Uh, but for those 20 minutes where the where the serial killing went down, it was glorious. <laughs> I will say I am obsessed with serial killer uh, documentaries and flicks and that sort of thing. And they're surprisingly normal. And I think that's what the point is. It's like there's just one deviation that they tend to not talk about that makes them act like complete monsters. And not just because they drink monster drinks like your father. That's true. That does turn me into a monster. I have a monster every day. It's my namesake. Don't feel like drink. garbage. 
No, what do you mean? Mo- monsters are great. I don't have a six pack of monsters every day. I have a Wait, monster. Wait, you, you every really day. do drink a monster energy drink every day? Yeah, I've, yeah. I've, so, it, That's insane to me. Those are in, those are incredibly unhealthy, bro. Even the zero calorie ones? Mm, I mean, I fucking I don't know, man. I'm not a doctor. But... <laughs> I mean, I'm not a licensed nutritionist, if that's what you mean. It's just caffeine and vitamins. It's really not. Uh, I mean, if you get the ones with a ton of sugar, yeah, they're no good. But your dad gets zero sugar. So it's just vitamins and caffeine. It's uh, okay. What is it? But I, like? I like that you guys are super judgy and weird about it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. here's what I here's what I know is that if I drink monsters, my fucking face breaks out. Well, any uh, any energy drinks at all. My face just gets destroyed. But I don't I don't drink the no sugar ones. The the zero calorie ones or whatever that's the issue right there you try some it is yeah sugar is well, what the problem yeah. is i don't drink them at all anymore i have no reason to drink energy drink. do they taste like tears and preteen sadness <laughs> no that's only the angst. rumor they <laughs> taste like angst <laughs> actually they taste like a, a super fizzy soda pop really Gross. What I really love about this is I tend to judge people who drink it too. So the fact that you guys instantly went there. Oh, you drink awesome. Monster. Oh, I didn't know I was better than you. <laughs> <laughs> but now you do. So there you go. Uh, so, yeah. So the point is that I did want to see that Ted Bundy thing, but then I didn't. And um, we did, however, finish watching the first season of The Sopranos. So the first season is knocked out. Only five more to go. Sopranos, good. Yeah, you know I should probably watch that too. I've only ever heard good things about it. Well, I'd I'd get Elsie's review. I mean, I'm I'm seeing it again for the first time in 20 years. This is Elsie's first time, and she actually lived in New Jersey at one point in her life, so she has a different perspective on it. Yeah, so I've always loved mobster movies uh, and that sort of thing in the first place, The Godfathers and all all that sort of thing. Uh, also. I love the the opening credits. You know, most of the time the credits are like the worst part of a thing. You want to skip past them. I love the opening credit. I love just the dirty feel of you're starting out in New York. You're driving to New Jersey. All the scenery is very familiar to me, um, having lived in New Jersey. And my ex-spouse was adopted by an Italian family. So it's kind of this extra, like, I feel very much like I've met all these people before. And the crazy, st- sadistic, evil mother is very much like my uh, ex-mother-in-law. So shout out to you, Marie. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's pretty awesome. I, I love it. It's gritty. It's awful. But they're so likable. That's the thing. They're likable bad guys. That, that, that I mean... James Gandolfini's performance as Tony Soprano is the original conflicted bad guy, the the quintessential complex character, right? That made like uh, like uh, Walter White. Exactly, you'd never have Walter White without Tony Soprano. James Gandolfini's dead now, right? Oh yeah, he's dead in a post. But I'd mm-hmm. heard that they are going to do a Sopranos prequel with. That will star James Gandolfini's son as young Tony Soprano. Interesting. Yeah, I feel like I heard that too, to be honest. Yeah, so I'll, I'm looking forward to that. You know whose son really looks like him? Who? Fucking Ice Cube's son. Oh, and yeah. Easy E's son. Yeah. They look just fucking like Ice Cube and Easy E. Didn't like I, pictures, yeah, like. didn't Ice Cube uh, play in that movie? He played Ice Cube's son, played Ice Cube. In, and Easy E's son played and Easy E. Straight out of Compton. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was a great flick, actually. Yeah, I was just like, shit. They really look like him a lot. No, that I was. Mean, we, that, that, that was I handy. Mean, yeah. I mean, because let's face it, Nick, you're you're never going to be able to play me in the biopic of my life. No, not at all. I'd have better luck. <laughs> no, it could though. You're no, right. No, it would be good. He'd no, be, it could do it. He'd be great. Well, we'd, he'd have to put on a pair of platform shoes, but other than that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Tom Cruise is only five seven, or six, something like yeah, that. Yeah, th- you could do a little forced perspective. Get some other short actors, <laughs> right? Do platform it, shoes, not not necessary. Yeah, do it Lord of the Rings style. I mean, unless you want to wear platform shoes, I mean, hmm. which is fine too. Yeah, I mean, I kind of wanted platform shoes when I was a kid. I thought they were fucking cool. Yeah, well, moon shoe type situation. Yeah, moon shoes that don't Bounce. like automatically break your ankles when you put them on. Well, you know what? You're an adult now. You can get Red those shoes. Those are the ankle destroyers, dude. Moon they boots? Are... Yeah. Yeah. You remember those? No. They're like That's... trampolines, individual trampolines for your feet. 
Oh, I do remember <laughs> those, actually. My sister yeah. Amy did that for a while. Yeah. Your, your, your beloved aunt Amy. She yeah. used to run on those trampoline moon boots. Yeah. That's the other thing I love about the Sopranos is Meadow Soprano is very, you know, hip and chic and wearing all the cool clothes for the 90s. And they were awful. These yeah. huge <laughs> platform shoes and the bell-bottom pants that were popular in the late 90s, early 2000s. So, yeah, you were right on trend, Nick. Perfect. Yeah, well, no one's ever said you're not trendy. So the other thing is, I, uh, you know, Guy last week talked about a book that he had read called Time Something. I can't remember now. Time Seizure or something like that. So I just finished reading an anthology of t short time travel stories. And then I also read a book called The Wanderers by Meg Howery. And The Wanderers is a internal story about the astronauts, first astronauts that go to Mars and their families and what they go through. And it's an interesting book. It's a great read, kind of a disappointing ending. And you think about it, there are a couple of points where the continuity isn't perfect in the book, but it's well worth it. It was absolutely transporting, and I recommend it, The Wanderers. Now, let's just talk about time travel for a minute. Sarah, you have enough scientific background to know that it's not really ever going to be possible in any meaningful sense. But isn't it intriguing that mankind is continually fascinating with time travel? Well, we're, you know, we're fascinated with our pasts and atoning for past mistakes and reliving like that, that sort of cycle of not being able to let go of our past is a is a deeply rooted human experience and desire. Yeah, that's deep. And there's yo. my armchair psychology. And yeah. you want to see it, too. Fuck. It'd be really cool to just go back and look at a fucking Mayan sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? Or some shit. Go back to Rome and just go in the marketplace. I do kind of wonder, as technology... You know, I kind of wonder what technology will play a role in, in the future. So, like, today's day and age, we have... Like, that World War II documentary that just happened. You know? That they recolored all that footage and stuff. Yeah, the World War World I. World War I. Yeah. You're right. My bad. World War One documentary. Uh, we have so much of our day-to-day -day lives recorded and all that kind of stuff that, you know, 50 years from now, if we maintain that footage and our civilization survives 50 years, people will have an excellent idea of how we lived, you know? Too much. They'll have too much fucking footage to go through. That's true. Well, but that's a, that's some historian's job, right? Yeah. That's not, that's not the some average sort of labor. curator. Right, job. Hmm. But, uh... Um, there's like I was listening to Dan Carlin's Hardcore History mm -hmm. and he was like when people talk about like foot soldiers like you know the Persians and the Greeks at 300 at first like when it's 200 men with swords and 200 men with swords and they meet and they fight like so do they just do both sides just rush at each other is it just line to line combat there's a lot of speculation but no one really knows what that looked like you know what i mean did the people get trampled in the very front line or did they do it you know kind of more spaced out one at a time that's the kind of shit a lot of people would like to see too how giant giant hand-to-hand -hand combat situations played out how they unfolded especially yeah. before the shield wall became the technology yeah that's an interesting point i will note that neither of you talked about the future see i'm interested in time travel from the perspective of going into the future versus going into the past and checking that that's stuff a good out. point too kind of like um well i guess loopers went in the back went in the past there i feel like there aren't as many tropes about going into the future as there are going into the past and that's interesting to me also because that's actually future time travel is technically quite possible due to the theory of relativity and right. how time gets distorted when you travel near the speed of light. Right. So, I mean, you could theoretically, if you had a spacecraft that could approach the speed of light, time would seem to you to be passing at a very normal rate, but it would be passing at a much significantly greater rate at the place where, that you left. I just read an article like this. Yeah. Uh, maybe it was in a math subreddit or something. Um, that was like, eh, I can't remember exactly. It was talking about the, the theory of relativity. So if, if a, if a spaceship takes, you know, has, if, if light near light speed is possible and a space and a, and a ship takes four years to get a place, but it really takes 400 years. Like it's 400 years for us, but four years for them because of the theory of relativity. Do they experience it as the four years or do they experience it as the 400 years? And good, it's like, good question. Well, scientifically, mathematically speaking, they would experience it as the four years. 
Exactly. So yeah. Everyone they know is dead, but but it's only been four years for them. Yeah. So but- hasn't Star Trek done something? Like this yet? Uh, this seems like Star have. Trek area. Everything, yes, of course they have. They've done time travel in the past, future, uh, up your butt, wherever, right? So. <laughs> uh, Own ass. <laughs> I will say my argument against uh, travel to the future is if you're going to travel to the future, you've got to go so far in the future that it's not realistic to ever see that future in your lifetime. Because I've seen Back to the Future too, and that is not the truth of today, and I'm sad about it. <laughs> Well, that's true. To That's say true. nothing of three, I, 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 we all we all need to get different haircuts and start wearing that fucking the snazzy, weird, shiny, reflective clothes. <laughs> strange leathers. I don't know. <laughs> strange. I'm into leathers. strange leathers. I'm not into. I'm not into looking like a disco ball. Uh, I don't know. I, if, if, are those the only two options available for that's future? Not the only two options. That's what you can those do two with. options. <laughs> And then you get a whole <laughs> third option. Well, that's. I'm ready for my Mad Max future. Yeah. Not really. Yeah. I, I take that back immediately. Just that's Mad Max terrible. cars. Just the cars. Right. Not that. Not run the... electricity though. No gas. Right. Not Ele- the electric right, Mad Max right. cars. Right. And none of the none of the cannibalism. We can skip that part. Yeah. Significantly less cannibalism, at least. <laughs> Ratchet back the cannibalism. And, yeah. Let's and, dial back on the cannibalism and, and let's, let's organ harvesting. Yeah. Inbreeding. Yeah, well, let's right. just not do any of it. Yeah, let's it. not do a Hills Have Eyes <laughs> slash Mad Max <laughs> slash Chinese prison mashup. Yeah, yeah let's future avoid dystopia. That. Okay, great. But you could travel to the future, theoretically. And discover if that's what happens. We're traveling to the future right now, bud. <laughs> what was the... <laughs> nice. One like fucking it. second at a time. <laughs> that's right. This the is the old a... fashioned American way. Yeah, that's right. This is a very slow time machine. Uh, so do you uh do you do goodreads hmm. dad do you put everything you read on goodreads hell no that's another why 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 would i do that so that i could then have this list of shit that you've read oh i see i mean i could ask you but (laughs) why do that when i could stock your online profile instead well yeah gee another online profile that sounds that sounds terrific yeah that sounds like just one more step all right so you don't do it i get it i'll I'll text you i'll send i'll send you a text i'll lose the text You'll I'll lo- put it in my Goodreads. There yeah, we go. Yeah, All right, I figured out the solution. <laughs> Glad we worked that worked through that. That's excellent. So anyway, I like how it came to you have to do the work. Yeah, uh, well, he won't be talked into it. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't want to do Goodreads. It sounds it sounds like a hassle. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like one more username and password. That's what it's it sounds. Not, like. no, it's shit. connects to your Facebook. Uh, even better. Oh, even more horrifying. <laughs> All right. So, uh, meanwhile, in the world of sports. The Super Bowl has been set, and it's going to feature the nice. New England Patriots for the third year in a row playing the Los Angeles Rams, which is, in a sense, a replay of the 2002 Super Bowl, which featured the New England Patriots and the then St. Louis Rams. Yeah, yeah the, that's... Uh... Go Rams, I guess. The only thing that's similar about those two events is the fact that Tom Brady is played in both those games and Bill Belichick coached in both those games. It's absolutely extraordinary that 17 years later, Tom Brady is still playing at the highest level of professional football. I was football. just going to say, I'm going to search. Do you know off the top of your head how old Tom Brady is? He's 41 years old. 41. 107. He's starting to be uh, <laughs> kind of a uh, Brett Favre status. Oh, he's well beyond Brett Favre status in terms. He's the oldest quarterback by. He was the oldest quarterback last year to play in a Super Bowl. So he's going to die in like 10 years, right? He, he may like, have been the oldest left? quarterback the year before to play in a Super Bowl. He's been the oldest quarterback to play in a Super Bowl, I think, the last three years. Man, I Googled Tom Brady just to check, double verify his age, and uh, shit, there's. It's just the top stories, top three stories are uh, shit about Daniel Radcliffe slamming Tom Brady over Trump support. Hmm. I'll be darned. What, like, why does he care about yeah, I don't American understand. politics? Well, why does he care about American football? Why does he give a shit about Tom? Well, I don't know. Maybe he likes fucking the Patriots. There's a lot to unpack here. There really yeah. is. Well, you think about the similarities between American football and Quidditch. You could understand why Daniel Radcliffe would, ha- would have a hard on for Tom Brady's support yeah. of Trump. You're right. He is like a like a Quidditch player. I was trying to think of a fucking, you know, a position in Quidditch. Right. But, uh, Do you not know them? 
No, Sarah, I, I got to say I don't. <laughs> I know there's the golden seeker or the seeker getting the golden snitch. There you go. And, so, you got, so you got one. And uh, maybe like a goalkeeper. Keeper. Yeah, that's two. Yep, keeper. There's, keeper. there's sweepers keeper. and blockers. That's it, right? There's there's beaters, beaters chasers. chasers. Yeah. Oh, well, what about smokers and jokers? Those are those are the cheerleaders <laughs> oh, okay. and right. the hecklers. Right. And the schmecklers. Anyway, Hagrid. <laughs> I play Hagrid on my Quidditch team. <laughs> well, he rides so, three brooms. Anyway, so that's a, that's the Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, who knows why Daniel Radcliffe is concerned about either Tom Brady or Donald Trump, for that matter. He ought to, uh, he ought to be worried like, about Brexit. Literally not his problem. Maybe he lives here, though. He might live here. Probably does. Why wouldn't does he? he? Have, I don't know. He might have some property over here. Mm. Probably. Do you, do you think Daniel Radcliffe made any money on those Harry Potter movies? Uh, no. Yeah, probably not. At least a dollar. I, mean. <laughs> I don't know. Who who can say? Well, anyway, so, yeah, so that's one aspect of the sporting news. We'll find out who wins next week, I suppose. Uh, my, uh, my money is on I don't give a shit. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. They're, not my, they're not my teams. I couldn't care less. Although I will say, if not my teams, if Tom Brady wins a sixth Super Bowl and goes six and three in Super Bowls, I mean, wow, who's ever going to top that? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like it's so routine now. Like you just expect this shit out of Tom Brady. But like, if anybody else just started doing this, it would be kind of an uproar right now. You know what I mean? It'd be impossible. I just think that Tom Brady has set the bar so high. That there will never, ever in a million years be any. Why would you ever watch football again? I mean, who? Because who's going to possibly duplicate that series of events? No one. Well, no. why would you ever? Why would you do it? Maybe, maybe. What if someone does though? I well, okay, fair enough. <laughs> in non sports related news that has nothing to do with anything. Yeah. Uh, I feel like everyone should know that I learned this week on wait, wait, don't tell me. That there are pills now that make your fart smell like chocolate. Yeah, no. and I feel like that's something everybody can care about. Are you rather fucking than kidding just people me? In Is that real? Can I? Yeah, and I'm dogs? totally gonna get it because I feel like it would I be amazing. That. Yeah, yeah, I need that. Yeah, I need that. I also smell Stocking like a fucking stuffers. Willy Wonka's factory. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, Willy Wonka should have been working on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Try us. Yeah, you should see if you can give that to dogs. That's what I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That probably hasn't been tested on dogs. Well, it's <laughs> chocolate. I hear chocolate's bad for dogs. Well, it's not chocolate. It's a pill it that makes, makes your smell fart smell like chocolate. Like chocolate. Oh, I see. Well, I good. will ask my vet. Right. Yeah. See if... Yeah. What, and do you know what this pill is called? Mm. I don't. Let me look that up so that right. we can recommend it. Yeah, see if it's real, first of all. <laughs> right, so ask your doctor if joy fart is right for you. <laughs> I got that joy, 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 oh, joy no. down in my fart. Where? Down in my fart. Here. Down in my fart. I got that joy, 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 joy. All up right. In my fart. Wrangling, okay. wrangling the middle schoolers back to the adult conversation. Oh, here. yes. Uh, right. Got I it. Something else here. I had some notes. But anyway, about the joy fart, just real quick. Yeah, I think that'd be a good thing. Everyone yeah. could need that. Everyone yeah. could use that. That's, that should be just a part of your daily routine. Exactly. Routine. A multivitamin and joy fart. Yeah, yeah, I had a I had a very unfortunate subway incident the other day. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, let me just say, my fellow passengers probably would have appreciated <laughs> smelling the <laughs> redolent odor of chocolate wafting through the car versus what actually happened. Instead of ketchup and onions, as it usually is. <laughs> Ketchup and onions would have been a significant improvement. <laughs> ketchup and onions, they were fucking begging for ketchup and onions. <laughs> uh, naturally, Are we ready I... for the update on the chocolate farts? Yes, I, yeah. absolutely. All right, so a French man, Christian Poincheval, a 65 year old inventor, uh, sells the pills for about $23 for 60 capsules, which allow the user to fart through the new year in grand style. They're a new addition to his odorific arsenal, which includes pills that make farts smell like roses, violets, or strawberries, and fart-reducing powder for pets. Okay, okay. I fart don't. That makes them more powder. gassy, though. Like, well, I mean, like, one of those, uh, 
uh, exploding bird situations? Like, does it just make it so that they don't expel the gas? They just retain it? I don't know. I mean, That's a good question. That, I'm not sure any of this has been tested or it, it sounds like it yeah. came from a French. It sounds a little like snake oil. Yeah, yeah I mean, too good to be true. Yeah, it sure does. This Frenchman, he'd be a multi-billionaire, wouldn't he? If true, I don't think uh, I don't think this is legit. There's only one way to find out, bud. Order it up. <laughs> Order it up. They not they not only create chocolate scented parts, they reduce intestinal gas and bloating thanks to the ingredients like vegetable coal, fennel, skiweed, plant resin, bilberry, and cacao zest. Mm. Cacao zest. Mm -hmm. Delicious. All right. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like a bunch of I'll let y'all be the guinea pigs on that. Yeah. We're gonna skip the joy fart, I think. I think we're gonna <laughs> skip it. That's what you think. Uh, well, I guess we're ordering up a batch. Who the hell knows? Elsie's going to slip it into your fucking food, dude. You're she not should. You're going to notice. She Crack absolutely it over the top. Until you got another subway ex incident, and all of a sudden it's not so bad. <laughs> and then, wait, then I'll, be, then I'll say, wow, I'm glad you did that. Thanks, Joy Fart, is what I'll say. Because right now all I'm saying is, thanks, Ziff. Thanks, our sponsor, Ziff's. Fine dining establishment in Invercargill, New Zealand, and the throne room tattoo parlor. Also in Invercargill, New Zealand. Go no, get yourself wonder, a breakfast uh, and a tattoo. What, yeah. How big is Invercargill, New Zealand? What's well, the you, I'm sure you can find that out. Uh, how, yeah. Car, yeah, Invercargill. I-N-D-E-R. Yeah, it comes right up. You can yeah. find out all about it. I can't wait till we all go as a family. Yeah, 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 yeah. Population, about 50,000. 50, yeah, it's perfect size. Uh, not so bad. Perfect size for a... Fine dining establishment and a tattoo parlor. Huh. 150 square miles. 194 square miles total. 194 square miles? Yeah, it says area. Territorial, 150 square miles. Urban, 44 square miles. That's a seems like a large uh, that seems like a large city to me. Uh I think it's like Jacksonville. Jacksonville is the largest city in the United States by square footage, but is not necessarily anything near large population. I don't think that's true. That can't be true, can it? Jacksonville is the largest city in the United States by square footage? Yes, by far. That doesn't make All sense. Right. Doesn't make I'm any sense to me. I'm looking it up. Compared to so, Houston? I mean, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm raining it back into sports. Oh, yeah, we thanks. Watched, we Sorry. watched some UFC last night. Oh, I was going to say, did they, did they fight last night? Uh, well... I, I misspoke. We didn't watch UFC. We watched Bellator. <laughs> okay, so, uh, and? I, I, you know, to Who's... me, MMA equals UFC, even though that's not true. So explain to me what the difference is between the Bellator attraction and the UFC uh, event. Different owners, I think. I think that's really about it. So they've got I, a... I, I think they might have different rules. I'm not 100% on that. Uh, their uh, drug testing uh, is certainly a lot more lax in Bellator. Oh, well, no wonder it's popular among certain fighters. But that being said, I mean, is it... Is okay, it, I'm looking up largest, the list of the largest United States cities by area, and the top four are all in Alaska. <laughs> Number makes... one is Sitka, Alaska. Hmm. Number two is Juneau, Alaska. Number three is Wrangell, Alaska. Number four is Anchorage, Alaska. That's amazing that Anchorage is below Sitka. And Sitka is not a big city. I can tell By you that. By land area, total areas including water are also given, but note that. Yeah, okay. Jacksonville is the largest city in the continental United States with over 840 square miles. All right. The I got Jacksonville as number five right here. Well, it's, it, this says con continental. Well, oh, so they, they just cut Alaska out neatly is what happened. Well, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Because Florida, it's the first four are Alaska and then it's Jacksonville, Florida right after that. Yeah. So in other words, you were incorrect on. Well, yeah, I'm so sorry for making the comparison <laughs> at all. I, I take back everything. You I've disrespect ever said. Alaska. Come on. Right. <laughs> exactly. The bears are going to come down. Let me tell you, Alaska's Problem. sick all and tired of your shit. They're coming <laughs> yeah. Okay. So anyway, well done. Uh, glad we work that up. So I guess, yeah, 50,000 people in Vercargill. Yeah, 44 square miles. Awesome. Point is, go to Ziff's. That's the point. Yeah. Just one more final thing. The, t the population of the largest city by area in the United States, Sitka, Alaska, has a population of 8,000. <laughs> about the same size as our hometown. That's, yeah. That's... It's 8,800, so it's almost 9,000. That's amazing. 
9,000 people, largest square footage. That's yeah. A lot of room. Per capita. There is yeah. a lot of room. If you need some elbow room, go to Alaska. Sitka. Sitka, Alaska, baby. Yeah. Ain't nobody there. Yeah, there are. There are 8,000 souls. 8,000 souls. Yeah, you're right. But you ain't going to see none of them. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> each one of them has 100,000 acres. So that's, yeah. I think themselves. it's 7,900 souls. I think there's about 100 soulless fucks up there. Uh, yeah, I did not know that. Soulless. Wow. All right, so uh, so who won a, the who was on the Bellator card? We watched two of the two. We really only watched two fights because we were in deep with the D and D. But oh. we fought. Uh, we fought. Uh, 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 Fedor Emelianenko versus somebody Ryan Darth Bader. Really, okay. that's his name, Ryan Darth Bader. That's well, hilarious. I don't know. Is it Ryan? His his last name's Bader. And his nickname is Darth. Okay. Yeah. So oh, Fedora Emilia Menkov and Darth Bader. And who yeah. won that? Well, okay. So first of all, Fedor is, uh, was the champion, the heavyweight champion of Bellator. And he's, he's, uh, 41, I oh, think. Oh, so. God. Yeah. So he's also old, um, but has been fighting since, you know, forever and ever Russian. Uh, and he got knocked out in 13 seconds. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so, not the fuck, which is crazy because Fedor Emelianenko is, he's got those hammer fists. Yeah. He knocks people he's, to fuck he's no out. joke. Like, well, I, you know, he's, he might be old, but he's been uh, destroying people for, all that means is he's been destroying people for 20 years. You know? Yeah. But one good so, punch from Darth leveled him, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Like right out the gate. Yeah. Got him. Like one, it was funny right after he, after he won, he's walking around the ring and his coaches come up to him. They're putting icy hot all over his fucking yeah, shoulders and shit. I'm like, what you, why? He threw one punch and won. Why are you putting icy hot on him? He did nothing. He walked out there, punched to do one time. I think he's okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, but he, he warmed up extensively. You see? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I guess. So Fedor Emelianenko, I'll say this about Fedor. I still believe he could whip Tom Brady's ass. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. So Tom Brady better watch himself. Better watch himself for that Super Bowl, bruh. <laughs> so then the other fight, yeah. there was another fight, and I don't recall who it fought. Was, it was, God, I can't remember his name either. Car Carlos, his last name was Corrales. Carlos Corrales. Corrales won against uh, the other guy. Yeah. I'm so, looking up the. So in other words. I was trying to find it, but I don't know the, the Bellator handles as well as i know the ufc handles um so what it sounds like is in that second fight that you watched one guy then had fought another guy and then one of those guys won is that well accurate? that was the first so the, the fedor and bader fedor and bader were the was the second fight um the first fight that we watched so the co-main event uh uh oh aaron pico and, and Her yeah and henry corrales okay so eric pico fight. and henry corrales yeah, Henry, this fight. Henry Corrales was the underdog, I believe. It was an upset. Yes. So, so Corrales won by TKO, but prior to that, um, Pico was was controlling the fight. Like Corrales got rocked a couple times, and like we really thought that he was going. Well, I really thought. I guess I shouldn't speak for the room uh, th that he was going to go down, uh, but then he snuck in uh, a right hook across the jaw. And followed it up with one across the temple, and and Pico was out, like yeah, out, he was, out. He was out on his feet, like yeah. He, he was still standing, but his waist, he was just bent over at the waist. Like, yeah, totally collapsed. Back and forth, and then the dude just fucking yeah, and, and then, and then hit him he again. Timbered backwards. But so. yeah, they were all locked up, and Corrales got dropped, and then fucking Pico came up on him, and they he was just rocking him in the body, and I was like, uh, that yeah. dude Corrales is right about to go down. He's gonna go down. But and just I, then. I some real strong liver shots then he was yeah. clearly crumpling yeah and right when i said that he just fucking got that miracle right hook what the hell and knocked him out so Sounds that like was so that was good that was a good fight and those two fights, those two fights well, we those last big. two fights were real good well i would have liked to see both in the first round go a little bit longer but yeah, yeah they, okay yeah let me rephrase the main event was not I mean it wasn't a really good fight yeah because it, it was a 13 was a second fight. Yeah. i'll put it that way i guess yeah. Bader just walked in there and knocked him the fuck out. Exactly. In 13 seconds. Yeah. yeah, that Icy Hot thing was hilarious. 35. It was 35 seconds. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I Elsie puts ice, Icy Hot on me after every podcast. Oh, I see. Yeah, I mean, so, it's just a thing. Clearly, you know, just keep me limber, you know. 
You're not supposed to talk about our weird kink in front of the kids. (laughs) There's a a guy who, uh, there's a guy uh, who was on the card last night named Odin Chinchilla. (laughs) How did um, how did Mister Chinchilla fare? Uh, he got uh, defeated in the first round. <laughs> Shocking! Uh, where, via by somebody TV with show. a with a more mammalian name. <laughs> right, well, but yes, ch- ch- chinchillas sure. are mammals. Come on, chinchillas are mammals. They're they're yeah. um they're um you know they're like mink. Sure, they are. Uh, I know. I I used to have one. I was gonna say. So why why what do you mean he had a more mammalian name? I I meant you know more reptilian name. There you go. You Something. I, I don't know what I meant. Yeah, I understand. Well, let's hear it for the Homo sapiens who won that fight. Good for him or her. Uh, anyway, so uh, it sounds like that Bellator. There's not that much difference between it and UFC, except I mean, I wouldn't watch Bellator. It just seems like watching, you know, I don't know, like minor league, minor no, league baseball. No, there's really good fighters though. There's just a lot of fighters they don't like Dana White, or they're not getting fucking paid like they want to get paid. So they're like, "Fuck you, I'll go to Bellator." Hmm. Interesting. I wonder- yeah, it's just it is just not as popular as UFC. Yeah, but it is on TV though. So oh, I like, see, like CBS and so on. Yeah, they don't do the. I don't think they do the pay per view thing. No, no, it's on Spike. I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, on Spike. Okay. Well, yeah, I may want to watch it more, but you know, mm-hmm. who's got the time? Hey, speaking uh, of which, so you're I mean, playing. It's like twenty minutes on Sunday, so. <laughs> Saturday. So, Today's yeah. Sunday. Okay. All right. Good. That's fair. 20 minutes on a Saturday night. I was busy. We were busy wrapping up the first season of Sopranos, though. Yeah. Priorities. Oh, there you have it. See, cho- decisions were made. Choices. So uh, just real quick, uh, who won Dungeons & Dragons? You know, it's, I know it's very competitive, so. Uh, <laughs> we did, we I did. Guess. We're still winning. We're still right. alive, so you, I guess we won. You, they were uh, trying to kill Johnny pretty hardcore. Johnny did go unconscious. But, but he survived. Yeah. All right. Because fantastic. I'm a miracle worker. Oh, I'll say you are. Hey, how's the uh, fitness going? Good? Eh. All right, we're taking a eh. break. Taking a fitness break. And whatever happened to you guys doing a thing? Well, we never bought the polar straps. Oh well, it's polar How's age, right? Going then. Yeah, polar age ten. Right. I, so that would re- reinvigorate your efforts. Is that a fair statement? Probably. Okay. Yeah. Maybe not. Who knows? That's worth. Uh, a if it doing another one then, though, right? Yeah. Get it together, dear. You said you were doing it. Okay, good point. I did. Aren't say we? That. Aren't we doing another one though? Yeah. Okay, good. Because I'm definitely, definitely going to win this one. <laughs> I admire your competitive spirit. All right, so I'll make a commitment to get a Polar H strap. I don't think Elsie wants to do that, but I'll get one. Let's do it. Why are you cutting me out of this? Oh, okay. Oh. But you're alive. Wow. Okay. Wow. No, it's fine. You, it's fine. He's no. just threatened. Mm-hmm. Nope. He's just That's, threatened by you. Right. He's putting, he's putting that seed in your head like, oh, she doesn't even want to do it. Right. You know why? Because he knows that I go walk this stupid dog in the snow and the rain and the freezing and whatever. And he's, he's afraid to lose to his wife. It's cool. It's cool, hon. It's cool. She's like a postal worker. Rain, sleet, or snow. That's what I said. She doesn't even mind. Okay. So I guess we're each getting one. All right. Sounds good. All right. So more to follow next week about that. And uh, good show. Oops, wrong way. Let's do that again. <laughs> a Shin Show is a production of Shinfluence and features the voices and opinions of the Shin family, which are entirely their own. It's brought to you each week by Ziff's, a fine dining establishment in Invercargill, New Zealand. You can find a Shin Show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. I, know, I, think, I feel like one of those days you should do it backwards. Just, just for yeah, that was interesting. Just to hear it backwards. <laughs> I played it in reverse. Yeah, maybe I should. Bizarro world type shit.